The death of Stephen Lawrence provided us with a moment for reflection. I just remember feeling like, you know, just disgusted at the fact that his life is wasted for no reason. I remember seeing his picture on TV the whole time. Um, my mum talking about what his mum must be going through. I think what made the Stephen Lawrence case special was the fact it was taken up by the mainstream. The whole Stephen Lawrence thing has created a lot more dialogue. You've got to have a really kind of rigid and aggressive approach to tackling discrimination or nothing changes. I think in some ways we're living in a less racist society. There was that crushing sort of sense that if something happened to you, you know, the police would pursue different courses of action depending on whether you were black or white. But now there's, there's definitely the sense that we are all equal in the eyes of the law, you know, the way that it should be. It's quite easy to blame poorly educated working class white men. It's a bit more tricky when you start saying, actually, much of the racism that most black people experience during their lifetime will be through interfacing with institutions run by white middle class people. I was kind of happy that that whole thing came out. Um, because I had experienced racism by the police like over and over again. You know, I was stopped and searched regularly, like two, three times a week. The Stephen Lawrence case was like freezing a moment in time, but it's really important to understand that the society we live in today is a result of at least three generations of campaigners in the community. I think Stephen Lawrence's murder forced us to confront inequalities in our justice system. Seeing the whole, the, the report and everything was kind of, it was good for people like me, it was good for young black boys, it was like, yeah, finally, everyone, they're exposed now, and everyone knows what's going on, because we felt like, you know, we were kind of, we couldn't do anything about it, we didn't have a voice. I don't think the Stephen Lawrence case made anything easier, partly because there was an almost an immediate backlash, and the police complain and continue to complain that their hands are tied in dealing with black criminals and so on. We could have develop very aggressive policies that tackle racism within the workplace, institutional forms of racism, but we didn't. Instead, we allowed it to public institutions, public bodies, to police themselves. In my reading, I came across um, <clears throat> the story of the murder of Emmett Till in the South, in America, and how his killers just like openly just said that they killed him. And, you know, they weren't charged, and it was, and, and then suddenly that kind of like brought echoes back to me, but obviously, in the, and I felt proud the fact that in Britain, finally, like justice had been brought. It changed me and it, it, it's given me some confidence at the same time, but also made me know that I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to make sure that I make something of myself and make sure that my kids make something of themselves um, because your life can be taken away so easy. It feels as if there's progress, but there's still, there's still unease. Um, the unease is more open now, which is probably, I mean, bringing things out in the open is probably the only way that things are going to get resolved, but you do wonder and you do sometimes feel weary. Why should anything change? Because the government says, we recognise institutional racism. Most black people said, well done, we've been talking about that for the last 30 years. Big deal. What are you going to do about it?